Neighbors, if you've been outside, you know it's hot, and that means the threat of brush fires. While other areas of California are battling massive fires, so far we've been spared. But as we all know, that could change in an instant. News aides Monique Griego spoke with Cal Fire about the danger, and she has some new video of the phenomenon of fire tornadoes after one popped up yesterday in Northern California. Well, we've been lucky this year in San Diego and haven't seen any major brush fires. That hasn't been the case across California. And once again, firefighters are seeing a rare, somewhat rare phenomenon pop up, tornadoes. The video would terrify almost any nearby homeowner. A brush fire twisting and turning into what's known as a fire nado. This video taken yesterday at the Loyalton Fire in Lassen County, California. We've seen them you know, a varying size if, uh, on, on a lot of fires. It's not something that's new to us in the industry. Isaac Sanchez is a fire captain with Cal Fire San Diego. And he says while San Diego County so far has been spared this year beyond small brush fires. We've uh, been fortunate in the county this year as far as being able to dodge the large destructive fire. That, however, isn't the case in other parts of the state. You know, there's there's three things that drive fire behavior. It's the fuel, it's the weather, and it's the, the topography. And with conditions now ripe for that possibility. For the next week, we're definitely going to have the weather uh, that, that is uh, uh, receptive to uh, large fires. It's no secret wildfires are raging longer and more violent than ever before. And that means fire tornadoes have been too. What is new is the size and the, the severity of them. Wow. In July of 2018, this one burst into the air as firefighters battled the car fire just outside of Redding, California. Now, as the lake fire continues to burn just north of Los Angeles, torching nearly 18,000 acres, San Diego crews are being dispatched to help. But Sanchez says San Diego County is never left unprotected if the big one were ever to ignite. We never give more resources than we can afford to give. Uh, we always have to maintain our initial attack capabilities. And coming up new at 630, firefighters tell us how the coronavirus is now affecting how they can fight fires. Monique Riego, News 8. A dangerous situation for all firefighters involved, not only because of the fire, but the heat. And there doesn't appear to be much relief in sight. Meteorologist Sean Siles joins us now with a first look at your hot microclimate forecast, Sean. You know, Steve, we talked about this yesterday about how the National Weather Service was going to probably extend this uh, excessive heat warning. Well, they've gone ahead and pushed it all the way through Thursday. And that means we're in store for some very hot conditions. And look at the entire southwestern part of the country, all the way up into Northern California. We're talking about a major heat wave that's going to be here well through the work week. And as you take a look at this time lapse, another thing that's going to start, and this could add to the fire danger, is some moisture streaming north would will start to bring us thunderstorms over Southern California, and that could spark a fire with lightning strikes. Currently, we're still in the mid to low 90s in the inland microclimates. It has been a very hot day here in San Diego, and as you take a look at this forecast, forecast for tomorrow. That's at the coastline mid 80s right on through Wednesday and for the folks in the inland microclimates that's a 100 tomorrow 96 and 96. So the heat is on. We'll take a look at that eight day forecast and hopefully give you a little bit of relief as we head into the weekend at the end of the work week. All right, Sean, thank you. And as the heat wave continues, the state power grid regulator has issued a flex alert from today through Wednesday. The California Independent System operator is calling on everyone to voluntarily cut back on electricity use, especially during the peak hours of 3 and 10 p.m. If not, we're more likely to see rolling blackouts. SDG and &E says it's working to give customers a heads up when those outages are coming. We do everything we can to let them know as soon as we can, and we're trying to alert our customers even before we've been given this order that there's a chance of this happening. Coming up on News 8 at 630, we'll take a, a look at how the shutoff decisions are made and who's less likely to see them, as well as how you can do your part to reduce energy usage and still keep cool. And a reminder, this week the county will have several cool zones open to help people get out of the heat and into out of San Diego's hottest areas. Uh, they were open this weekend and will be available again tomorrow through Friday from noon until 5 p.m. Those locations in Fallbrook, Brago Springs, Alpine, Lakeside,
Riverside, Potrero, Santa Isabel, Ramona, Spring Valley, and Valley Center. Your temperature will be taken on your way in, and you'll have to wear a mask while inside. Well, what started as a man questioning a person who was near his car in the East Village ended with gunfire. And the victim in the hospital happened just after two this morning at the Clermont Coast Hotel on 7th Avenue. San Diego police say a 31 year old man spotted someone near his car, so he went to go see what was going on. Then he was shot in the chest. He was taken to the hospital. We're told his injuries are non life threatening. The gunman took off. Police have not yet released a description. A frightening scene in El Cajon where a toddler fell out of a second floor window happened just before noon. Police say the boy was playing on a couch and fell out of the window that it had been opened up due to the heat. The family heard the child's screams and found that he had landed in a large bush below. Luckily, that broke his fall. He was taken to Rady Children's Hospital. The extent of his injuries not known at this hour, but police have ruled this an accident. Meanwhile, in Linda Vista, a bizarre scene overnight where San Diego Fire responded to find a woman who was stuck halfway inside her own bathroom window. So what happened here? Well, neighbors heard the woman screaming for help around one o'clock. She says that she locked herself out and then thought she could fit through the window. Well, after about 15 minutes, firefighters were able to get her through into the home without any injuries. <laughs> Today, San Diego County is reporting 334 new coronavirus cases out of just over 7,000 tests. That's a positive rate of 5%, and that puts the county under the 100 new cases per 100,000 people threat threshold needed to get off the state's watch list for five straight days. Three new community outbreaks were reported, bringing that total to 24. Thankfully, there were no new deaths. That total remains at 626. There is still a lot of uncertainty about the upcoming school year as many schools begin with l distanced learning, but hope to head back to the classroom when the state approves. And as you can imagine, teachers are feeling all of this too. They're having to prepare what, for what could be a sudden switch. News 8's Carrie Lane spoke to a couple of teachers about what they're doing to provide students with the best learning experience no matter what happens. San Diego has officially met the criteria to come off the state's monitoring list. Now, what that means for local businesses still remains to be seen. But if these numbers hold steady, schools could technically open for in-person learning by the end of this month. It kind of feels like we're on a little bit of a roller coaster. The coronavirus has created a lot of uncertainty for parents and teachers as both try to plan for the upcoming school year. Patience and understanding and communication is what we're going to need a whole lot of right now. Getting children back in the classroom could soon be a reality. And for an overwhelming number of teachers in the Poway Unified School District, that news is encouraging. I think that, you know, at the end of the day, we all, we all want to be back in the classroom. This is not about, like, why we're in education at all. I belong in the classroom with kids. With schools set to start the year online, teachers are faced with the challenge of helping build relationships through Zoom. According to Delser Elementary teacher Nicole DiCarlo, the way you do that is by asking lots of questions. It's easy to do when you're little because you just have to have a couple of things in common and you're like, oh, that can be, I could be friends with that person. It is making certain that our personalities as teachers shine through that screen. I think it's about getting to know each and every kid. It's going to be about using those breakout sessions and Zooms and connecting with kids one to one. With some schools set to begin with virtual learning, there is still a chance that students will make it back in the classroom this year. The question then is, how do you make that transition seamless for the younger students? I am planning to provide my students to be with the resources they need to be successful on Zoom and be able to take those back to the classroom should we go back or when we go back and so that we have that fluid transition. Now, whether or not any of these schools will actually bring kids back on campus for in-person learning still remains to be seen. I can tell you at least 48 schools here in San Diego County have already started the waiver process. For News 8, I'm Carrie Lane. All right, thanks, Carrie. Without question, not an ideal situation, but kudos to these teachers who are really having to reinvent themselves to make a meaningful experience for kids. I mean, they were thrown into something horrible yeah. in March. Now they've had the summer to kind of say, okay, it's how a little can we better. do this effectively? Right. And they're trying their best. So let's keep our fingers crossed. That uh, it's just hard for everyone. It, it is tough, so that's for sure. We feel for you guys.